Cleveland Market at the Bank of America, one of the outlets of the Bank of America. Here, and this is an action for Valentine's Day 2012 where people are going into the bank and taking their money out silently and peacefully. And two days from now, they're gonna put that money into a credit union. Uh, and this is Martin, Martin McCarroll, and he came along as he generally does for support uh, on this, but he also has a personal story to tell. So can you explain what your personal story is first? And second, what were the triggers that finally made you make the decision? Sure. Um, so I think, you know, uh, with this, there's so many different ways in which the banks have been terrible that they're all adding up. So, um, you know, I think a year, year and a half ago, I was sort of pissed off about the fact that we had bailed out all these banks and that they were continuing to foreclose on people and that it really, and they giving themselves huge bonuses. Etc. So against this background of dissatisfaction with the banks, there was the, uh, what happened in, I guess, late October of 2010, where WikiLeaks released all these diplomatic cables, and uh, that was known as Cablegate. And then there was all this extra-legal repression of WikiLeaks. There was PayPal refused to let people donate, Visa refused to let people donate, MasterCard refused. So then there was still that one could uh, wire money through one's bank, and Bank of America specifically prevented people from wiring money through their bank. Now, was this to undermine WikiLeaks? I think so, and around this time, WikiLeaks said that they had a whole lot of documents about misbehavior by Bank of America, which we still haven't seen. So, it, But... Um, there was, I mean, plenty of misbehavior in any case. So, I mean, we believe that this because of so much else that yeah. WikiLeaks had. I mean, there's no doubt WikiLeaks has something on Bank of America. Sure. Okay, go ahead. So, um, so I meant to close my account there. I had opened, uh, a, I had opened an account with the credit union several years before, and that uh, my wife and I had a joint account at Bank of America, so we opened a joint account at my credit union uh, and we had shifted all of our direct deposits over to the credit union account. But we still kind of just had some money sitting around in the Bank of America account and we still had a card for it. So I went in to try to close it and was in maybe February of 2011 and was told that uh, my wife needed to be there as well. And so it was a few months before she and I both had a Saturday free and went down there to close it and it turned out we didn't both need to be there. So I was a bit annoyed about that. But basically we were just doing the wrapping up. Maybe there was a couple hundred dollars left in the checking and the savings. Pull that out of there, close it, you know, do the paperwork. Let me ask you, do you think that a lot of these banks are refusing to let people withdraw their money or they're trying to block that in some yeah. way. Do you think this was just inefficiency on the part of Bank of America or do you think they I, were trying to I block don't, you? I don't think it was necessarily deliberate. I, I think it's quite likely that whoever was there didn't understand the procedures. Um, it's sure. possible it might have been a deliberate uh, misleading gesture, but I have no way to know that on the basis of one point of data, so um, I think it might be an interesting thing to have people who are going to close their accounts anyway, who have joint accounts, go into a few different branches as just one person and see what the reactions are, and if there's a pattern, then I think we are we can legitimately make a claim that they're misleading people and trying to slow them down and, and, and stop their, them from doing what they want to do, but I wouldn't make that claim on the basis of just my experience. Well, uh, I have to say on Wells Fargo, some very credible people have said that Wells Fargo really does try uh -huh. to discourage people, and, and I think there were some folks arrested. Uh, there was a woman who was pushed back into a bank after she tried to leave, and then they arrested her for being in the bank. I mean, well, I mean, I think we have to distinguish between when people go in just on their own to close accounts and when you have these actions where people go in right. who are, several of them are closing their accounts at once. Yep. Mm -hmm. I mean, not that they shouldn't be allowed to do that and not that the bank should stop them from doing that, but that's viewed as a much more explicitly political act. Mm -hmm. uh, and so for whatever reason, they, they I, I can understand, even though it's not right for them, I can understand why they try to stop that and disrupt that. Um, 
but if, if people are just sort of one by one, two by two, closing their accounts here and there, right. and they're being prevented from doing that, that's probably uh, a violation of various, you know, fair banking practices or what have you. So, um, I have to ask you, Martin's been very active with everything to do with WikiLeaks and um, with um, Bradley Manning. Bradley Manning, thank you. And I, so it doesn't surprise me that the WikiLeaks problem was a trigger for uh -huh. you. And did you mention another trigger, another thing? Well, just the background of how the banks had, you know, basically taken the bailout money and were incredibly ungrateful about it and were failing to lend out. They were still foreclosing on people. I mean, basically, they managed to uh, be saved in their day of need and then went back to doing right what they were doing before, giving themselves huge bonuses, etc. Still doing it. Yeah, absolutely, and there's still I'm still shocked by the number of foreclosures. I don't understand why they're allowed to even do a single foreclosure in this economic environment for any reason. They um, broke all kinds of laws doing that. Yeah, I mean, but even when, well, they definitely broke some some laws and the, the robo-signing and all that, but even right. when they're not breaking laws, I don't think that they should be allowed to foreclose on anybody. Um, I mean, it's not like they can even sell the houses at any kind of reasonable value. They're so underwater. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. It just seems that they're stuck in this mode of automatically doing what they do. Yeah. So uh, what I'd really like to see is um, movement to press for a, a moratorium on foreclosures at a minimum a moratorium. I don't think anybody should be uh, thrown out of their house because they can't pay the banks who, you know, have acted so inappropriately and so illegally. Thank you, Martin, very much sure. for explaining you. why you came down here today. Really sure. appreciate it.